The Meta Ads Network has tons of different placements where you can have your ads serve. And some of them are owned and operated by Facebook and Instagram, and others are operated by third-party partners that are trying to monetize their placement throughout the network. Now, although Facebook enforces their community standards on those additional placements, there still might be some that you don't want to show up on. And just like Google Display Network, we can exclude some of these placements from our campaigns. So in this video, we want to talk about what block lists are, show you a few ways to create them, and then how to apply them to your campaigns. Let's start by talking about what block lists are on the Meta Ads platform. As we've discussed previously, there are lots of different placements that you can show up on the Meta Ads network. And a lot of these placements have partner content from other brands on Facebook where they're monetizing the impressions they can get from Facebook ads. As you can see in this paragraph here, what block lists allow you to do is stop your ads from appearing on some of those placements that you don't think are suitable for your brand or your campaign. Now, unlike the Google Display Network, where all websites are owned by other people, monetized placements from Facebook can come from the Meta Audience Network, which would be the equivalent to the Google Display Network, but they can also show up on Facebook in-stream videos, ads on Facebook Reels, ads on Instagram Reels, and Instagram profile feeds. These are all Facebook and Instagram owned properties, but the ads are served by partner brands. So block lists will allow you to avoid showing with certain partners if you don't think their content is suitable for your brand or your brand's audience. Now that we have that out of the way, let's show the multiple different ways you can create block lists. I'm in one of our client Facebook ads accounts. And to create a block list, we'll need to come over to the all tools section here, open the menu. And at the top, we can see brand safety and suitability is in the shortcut section because I've been using it, but it would also be under the manage business. Third one from the top, if you haven't used it recently. On this page, we get another quick recap of how the brand safety and suitability controls work. You can see that we start off with the inventory filter and then down here we have block lists, but none are available. We need to create those on the block list tab which is gonna be over here. This is gonna be the first way that we can create a block list in our Meta Ads account. One thing to keep in mind up here is that as you block more placements from your campaigns or your account, you will limit your reach and Facebook encourages you to make sure that you find the right balance, which they're right about, but in my mind, content is either suitable for you or not. So it's pretty black or white. So the first way to create a block list is to just come up here to this big green button and create a block list. Once we do that, we can give our block list a name. Again, this is never a good name. Make sure that you have something in here that makes sense. But then we get the formatting for the block list that we need to have, which is a TXT or CSV file, and it includes the URLs for the Facebook pages or profiles, Instagram profiles, or the website domains and app store URLs. Luckily, this is one of the easiest formatting upload files that we have in all of digital advertising. You can see here, each item should be on a new line and you can click here to download the sample list. I did that a little bit earlier today, and this is what it looks like. You can see there's just the website URL, there's no header, there's no nothing. So overall, the formatting for a block list is very simple. Once you have your files all done, all you need to do is upload them here and click upload. But now you might be thinking, okay, sounds simple enough, but how do I know what publishers to block? This is where we have a few different options for creating a block list. The first thing you can do is download the publisher list. And if I do that, I get a zip file in my downloads folder. And when I open it, I get these five Excel files with lists to all the individual placements for Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, Audience Network, Facebook in-stream videos, and Instagram profile feed. You might be thinking, why do we have a different file for each one? Now, let me show you. This is the Facebook Reels file. So in it, you'll see the URL, which is the information that we would need. You then have the publisher information, their username, the date that they were added, the Facebook page followers, the language, whether they have a blue verification check, the number of videos that they've published in the last seven days, and median views per video for the last 28 days. Seems simple enough, right? But again, there are five different files, and here's why. If I jump all the way down to the bottom of this file, you can see that there are 977,695 placements just for Facebook Reels. Every time I messed with this file before, my computer had to stop, give me the spinning wheel of death for just a second, and then it would start to let me go forward. This is a ton of information. And although maybe not all 
of the lists are quite this large, it makes sense for them to be broken out so that the list is actually a manageable size for you to look at. Now, speaking of manageability, I don't know how many of you are actually going to spend the time to go through 977,000 lines of text for just one of the five placements. So in my mind, utilizing this download option is not the best way to come up with your block lists that you can use in your accounts. But for the sake of being on this page and following this process, let me create an example block list, just like the one that I was creating in the interface, and we'll upload it and I'll show you how it works. So here I've done that. I have just a handful of different placements, don't even know what they are, but I've got them formatted just the way that we need them. So if I'm going to upload these into our account, I would just need to come down here, choose the file from my device, example block list, open. There's one file in place, now I click upload, and now my block list is in place. But you'll notice here that the next step is not, okay, take me back to my campaigns. Next step is apply because when you upload a block list, it's only a placeholder in your account, just like a negative placement list in Google Ads. You need to actually determine where you want this block list to apply before anything else happens. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We'll click apply. And we have the options to apply this to all ad accounts, which will be all ad accounts in the business manager that you're currently in. So depending on if you're an agency or somebody who has access to multiple accounts within your certain business manager, you might want to keep an eye on that. You can choose to add it to select accounts. In this business manager, there's only one ad account. So we would check the box here and apply it to just the one ad account. But you can choose which ones you want to apply it to, or you can choose not to apply it to your account right now, which is what I'm going to do because there's one more option for where you can apply a block list that I want to show you before we talk about the other two ways to create a block list. So I'm just going to go ahead and click save. And now you can see that we have it in the account. It's not in use. If we were to go back to the controls page where we started, there is a current block list now. It's not being used, but you can change that. The last place we can apply a block list is actually in the campaign manager. So let's navigate back to the ads manager. We'll then click into the edit pencil for this campaign. And then although most of the help articles and all of the different about pages say that you can apply block lists at the campaign level, what they really mean is you can apply them at the ad set level. If you look here, there's not actually any place to apply a block list because if you'll remember from previous videos, all placements are controlled at the ad set level. So I'm going to click into one of these ad sets. We'll scroll all the way down to the bottom. So that's where placements live. We can ignore the learn more or edit pencil. Come down here to more, scroll down a bit. Now you can see the brand safety and suitability, the inventory filters that are there. And here we go, block lists. We we'll click edit. We can now apply whichever block lists we want. For this one, we'll just apply our example block list. And now those placements will be excluded from this ad set if I were to hit a publish, but I'm not going to. Yes, I want to discard. As I mentioned, there are two more ways to create block lists in Facebook that I think are probably better options than scrolling through literally millions of lines of text. Let's go back into the brand suitability controls tab. Now the second option you can use for finding your block lists is to come to the partner publisher lists tab. Here you get access to each of the five different publisher lists that we saw in the Excel files. And as you can see here, this one has 743,000. This is our 977,000 we looked at earlier, 85,000, about 33, and another 29,000. So quite a lot. Let's go ahead and just click into this first one here. Now from here, we have lots of different controls. We can always switch to a different type of placement if we want to. We can determine the number of followers that any individual placement has. We can decide if the publishers are verified or unverified, if we want to include all of them. You can choose language and then the date added as well. Each of those different options will filter this list down below so that you'll be able to see a little bit more specifically who all shows up. As you can tell, there's tons of different pages in here. Taylor Swift, Nat Geo TV, Jennifer Lopez, BBC News. Some of these might be great options for you to show up next to, but some of them might not make sense for you. Let's just say that for whatever reason, you really don't want to show up on the Mr. Bean page. Here, you can either come over and click this little icon for add to block list, or if you want to choose a handful of different pages, let's see these top four, you can choose the add to block list, You'll then choose the block list, either the example one that I already created, so you can add to an existing list, or you can create a new block list if this needs to apply at a different level or to only a certain campaign, something along those lines. This seems like a much easier option for me, 
because you don't have to look at an Excel file, upload anything. You can just filter for the criteria that you want to use and create a block list right in the interface. But there is one more way that might be even more reasonable for all advertisers with block lists. And that starts in the delivery reports section. Now, the difference between the partner publisher lists and delivery reports tabs are that partner publisher lists include all available partners within every single one of these five Facebook placements. The delivery reports tab only shows the placements that the ad account that you're in has served on before. So rather than going through all available placements, you're only looking at the ones where you're actually showing up. So here, let's go ahead and click into in-stream videos. And now we can see all of the different placements where this campaign's ads have shown. We don't have quite as many filters up here at the top. You would narrow down the specific filter. And then for publishers, you still get partner publishers or non-partner publishers, basically meaning pages and profiles that did or did not sign up for monetization. And then the date range from when your ads were shown on those pages. The functionality here is exactly the same though. You just check the box next to them, apply them to a block list, or add as a content level breakdown. So if I do that, we now get to see the actual title or URL of the video that's included. You don't get to decide whether one of these will be in a block list or not. You have to choose the entire category, but this can sometimes help you decide if a brand is a good fit for you, if you're not familiar with it already. I think block lists are a great way to control the placements you have on the Meta Ads network and make sure your brand is showing up only next to content that is suitable for your target audience to see and doesn't put your brand in a bad light. As you probably saw as we were going through this block list setup process, there are lots of other content controls you can have on Facebook and we'll have some videos for those in the future. But for now, hopefully this demystifies block lists a little bit and you can get started creating them for your account or the specific campaigns that you need them applied to. If you have any additional questions about block lists or anything else on the Facebook ads network, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.